What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a new episode of Ghost in the Night. Today, we got a special conversation with Kelly from Kelly's Unexplained. She is new to the paranormal game, which so she has a lot of enthusiasm, and I love that. I love people who have a lot of enthusiasm when it comes to this, and she has a passion for it. We talk about a vast variety of topics around the paranormal, how she got into it, which is something I really am interested in, and I've wanted to talk about it for a long time. She got a Twitter beef, and her Twitter beef... You know, I guessed it. She got into a little argument and was sticking up for somebody with one of these celebrity psychic mediums. And I guessed exactly who it was. She told me who it was after the we recorded the uh, episode, and I was right on the money. So I might do another episode with that once I talk to her maybe again and see if I can, you know, out him a little. Ooh, I him. Whoops. Anyway, but, you know, she she's fascinating. You definitely want to. Take a listen to this one. And in the middle of it, she uh, talks about something she caught that was really fascinating. Now, I hadn't seen that video until I, I watched it after we did the conversation, after we did the interview. And uh, it's creepy. It's really weird. And uh, I'm mesmerized by that one. So go check out her channel after this, uh, after you watch the episode. So let's go ahead and get it started. Ghost in the Night with Phil Sams. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Ghost in the Night, a hauntings and paranormal podcast. Today we have a special guest. She is a YouTuber, brand new YouTuber who's having great success in the YouTube space. Kelly, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, I have, I saw some of your content and one of your videos really struck a nerve with me because it was something I've been wanting to talk about here recently. And it's something that I truly believe in is that certain paranormal experiences can open your eyes. And from your, I'll let you tell your story, but I'll kind of rough it, you know, give us a quick overview of it. You had an experience and since you had that experience, you have had more experiences. And that is something that I really want to focus on in my investigations and in my journey in the paranormal research is how one experience can steamroll and lead to more, more experiences. So go ahead and tell everybody what I'm talking about here. Okay. Well, um, I had installed, um, some home cameras, um, at my home. I think I started with three, just one on the driveway to see if, you know, anyone's driving by, uh, I put one on the front door, um, and then and one in the backyard. And no, I take that back. I only started with two, the driveway camera and the front door camera. And I'd had them probably for about a month and I caught something, um, the spirit orb, um, on the driveway camera, uh, about two 31 in the morning, exactly two 31 in the morning. It was actually July 1st. It, it has a setting where it's motion detected and it only starts recording when it sees motion. So it'll record cars and, you know, things like that. It's recorded bugs, um, and people walking their dogs and going in and out of the house. Well, um, and it keeps it all in this one file. Well, I just happened to, uh, I don't know what it was. Something told me, go look in your files. Usually there's so much movement that there's probably a list of a hundred different videos a day and it takes so long to go through them. And usually I don't look at them unless there's like a reason to, like someone's coming over or I'm checking to see when my kids are coming or going. But I did wake up and I, and I saw this circular weird vision on this camera and so I had posted it on Facebook um, because I didn't have YouTube at the time. And this was my first experience. And so I was like, guys, have y'all seen anything like this? Do y'all believe in stuff like this? And the, the Facebook post really blew up. I had several comments. I had a lot of likes. I mean, it, the conversation just kept going and going. Well, then I got another one like the day after that. And then two days later, I posted those. I was like, hey, guys, look, I'm getting more. This is really crazy. My son is 20, and he's a Facebook friend of mine. And he was like, mom, if you post another ghost video on Facebook, I'm going to unfriend you. 
And <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I'll just put them on YouTube. I just kept getting them. And I, I, I was like, I'm just not going to keep these in my phone. Like I, there's, I know there's people out there that want to see this or have questions. So I started with that. I had no idea how to do YouTube. Um, and the more I got them, the more I started reading and, and investigating and researching to find out what this really was. Wow. Um, your first impression now, did it startle you? Were you scared or did it just kind of strike up a curiosity? Actually, it, it was exciting. It was so exciting. It did not scare me at all um, because, you know, I'm a huge fan of ghost adventures. I've watched paranormal caught on camera. I'm a huge fan of the travel channel. So I'd seen all of those episodes. I'd seen the ghost orbs um, or the orbs um, on those episodes. And so I had an idea of what they were and never in a million years did I think that it would happen to me. It was, it was one of those beliefs that that happens to mediums or that happens to psychics or that mm -hmm. happens to um, people that go out investigating. Like I, I didn't go looking for it. It kind of just fell in my lap. It right. came to me and you know, I'm 40 years old and I've never experienced this my whole life. I've never really had cameras at my house either, but you yes. know, it took 40 years for me to have my first experience and no, I wasn't scared. Um, in fact, I actually get really sad. I haven't had anything on my cameras in about a week and a half and it makes me really sad. Really? I miss my, yeah, <laughs> I do. I wake up and go, where's my, where's my ghost friend at? Right. Now, has anything else, have you noticed anything else happening? Maybe strange knocks or any other kind of activity in the home? I have heard things um, like a hello while, while I'm in bed. Or I will be, you know, getting ready in my bathroom, putting on my makeup, getting ready for work. And I, my, I, I hear my daughters, you know, talking to me in, you know, the hallway and I'll turn around and she's not around. She's outside. She's in the car waiting for me to go. So I have heard things. Um, I'm not catching them on camera because unfortunately the cameras at my house don't pick up audio. Okay. It's only video. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, and you never had any kind of experiences growing up that you know, know of. Well, I... I think I have, but you know, I can't for sure say yes. My father died whenever I was five of skin cancer and I was a, a daddy's girl mm -hmm. and it was very traumatizing. It was a very ugly death. It was very fast. And I do remember seeing him standing there at the end of the street one time, but I think I was like nine. He died whenever I was five. So it was about a four year, you know, difference. And so I just thought, I thought I was crazy. And I just, okay, it should, it was probably just some man standing at the end of the street. Didn't think anything of it and really haven't had a lot since. Really? Um, yeah, because, you know, like I told you when we were talking earlier, I firmly believe the younger, as we get older, it's almost like we are trained or brainwashed into not believing in the supernatural. And it takes this one little moment like you're, video with the orb to kind of spark that not interest but open that gate or open that i hate to use the word portal but just open your mind to the wonders in what is possible in this world essentially and once that thing happens you start seeing more you start experiencing more but i you know it's orbs are a little tricky and you know i'm not a as you know, you probably have seen some of the stuff I've posted mm -hmm. on, you know, I'm not a big believer in orbs and not, it's not even that I'm not a big believer in orbs. It's the fact that they're so hard to confirm, so hard to truly know exactly what it is. Cause there is, you know, dust and other things. Like if I, you see something like that in with your naked eye, now we got something now it's hard to, but just to prove something is a spirit orb is, through video is very hard. Um, yeah, and I, and, I, and I try to do that whenever I post my um, orb videos. I, I compare it. I put a side by side or one right after another of what 
bugs look like on my camera or what dust looks like on my camera. And you can see a huge, huge difference, huge difference of what my camera looks like with those three or four different entities. Right. Um, and there was the one, the, la the one that I posted last week, you actually saw the legs on the bottom of the orb and then it just kind of absorbs into the ceiling and there's no way. Right. Um, and I, and like I said, I put a, a I put a bug right behind it so you could see right. how my camera visualizes bugs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, like I had a lady send me, uh, matter of fact, it was this morning. I woke up and she's on Facebook for my Facebook page for the podcast. She sent me, cause I posted something on Facebook, a little video, eight minute video talking about orbs. And my whole thing was, you know, I'm not saying they're not, I'm just saying, I don't know. And they're too hard for me to prove or disprove. So I kind of just stay away from them. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, what do you think about this? And it, there was a bunch of orbs and, and it was a picture of her living room, not very well lit, just mm -hmm. the, the flash on the camera. And I saw there was one that was really kind of interesting. And I said back, yeah, you, there are a few that are very interesting there. However, I don't know the environment that it was taken in. I don't know what camera. I don't truly know what your shutter speed. I, there's too many variables for me to say, yes, that is a spirit, or yes, that is dust, or yes, that is a bug. I can't, I'm not going to say either way. I don't know what it is because I'm not there. I don't know how it was taken. So that is kind of my point. And people mis take that as me hating on orbs. No, I very well could be. I, I don't have any answers to anything. I'm kind of an idiot, just like the rest of us. You know, I don't have answers. If we knew exactly what they were, we wouldn't be having this conversation. That's the beauty, the beauty of yeah. the paranormal. And uh, yes, and that's why my my channel is unexplained. I can't explain it. Right. Um, but um, I do know what I saw, and I know the feeling that I get when I see it, and I know the feeling that I get when I don't see it, and um. It, it lights a fire in me. I just want to know more. I want, it's like, I can't get enough. I'm hungry for the paranormal now. Um, I, I want to watch everything I can watch. I want to network with everyone I can network with. And um, I just wish that I had started this 20 years ago. Um, you know, but me too. you know, me too, me too. <laughs> uh, you know, and I'm my philosophy, the way I was brought up, I was, you know, I'm older than you, not much, but I'm older than you. We in our when our younger in our twenties and our you know early teens we didn't you didn't talk about the paranormal if you had an experience no. you it was hush 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 I should say but I was lucky enough my mother was you know she was cool and uh, she would she let me talk about those things because I've lived in people who've listened to the podcast or watched my videos have know that I've lived in haunted homes. All my life, I've had activity in just about every home I've ever lived in, except for the current one, which is kind of iffy. Maybe, maybe not. I haven't really made that decision yet. Uh, so it's kind of common knowledge to me. So I, I've always been open to it. However, when something, tr the more I've started investigating, I didn't start investigating until I started this podcast, which was uh, just two years. And uh, I went out with a group and my first time going out on a real official investigation, I caught a shadow figure on camera. And I went back, couldn't debunk it. So now everything is kind of built on that. That's my baseline at this point. And I have mm -hmm. been actually very disappointed on probably 60 to 70% of the investigations, places that I've investigated since that. Because most people think, paranormal investigating is like what you see Zach and the boys do that, you know, it, I wish it was that active, mm -hmm. you know, cause there's a lot of sitting around in the dark talking to yourself saying, am I crazy? So I'm kind of like at the point where I thought the way I grew up in the ex evidence and experiences I had growing up, paranormal was all around. It was less common knowledge and, or it was common activity to where now I'm starting to say, this is actually hard and it's not really as frequent as what I thought. So when you have that experience and the one thing I will say to the people that are listening, if you have to keep your head about you and because if you have an experience that you can't explain, which is great, you can't, not everything is paranormal. Sometimes things are just happen and you can't explain them doesn't make it make it a spirit or a ghost 
And so people can start seeing things that aren't really, or not misinterpreting much easier things that aren't really paranormal because they have a bias. And you seem to have a real, yes. a cool, calm, collective head about you and very rational about it. So I don't think that's you, that will happen to you. But there, I've seen people, you know, have an experience that truly they can't explain. And then next thing you know, everything's a ghost. Every little bug. No, I think it's funny because I, I, I also have a... 13 year old girl actually she turns 14 next week so i have you know my 20 year old son um and then my 13 year old daughter and you know once this started happening well you know the paranormal caught on camera interview they did ask me about my children and how my family feels about this and um they 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 kind of think it's funny kind of like you you know you kind of grew up with it 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 was just common knowledge they're starting to feel that too and so what what they'll do is they'll move like a, a juice you know, carton or a cup or something and go, Oh mom, did your ghost move that? And they'll laugh and, you know, walk away or they'll leave cabinets open at night. And then when I get up, the cabinets will be open. They're like, I guess your ghost just left those cabinets open. Um, so it's, it doesn't scare them. You know, they, they think it's cool. Um, when my, when, you know, I first started the YouTube, my son thought it was kind of silly. He was like, Oh my gosh, my, my friends are going to make fun of me. My mom's on YouTube, but Every day now, he's like, how many followers do you have? How many subscribers do you have? You're you're doing pretty good. You're doing pretty yeah. good. I like watching your stuff. So he's a big supporter now. And that's good that they, all kids are like that. And I'm, you know, I kind of keep this, I shouldn't say I keep this away from my my family, but they know what I do. They know what I, where I'm at now. But I kind of try to, I try to keep, because I have two, two girls of my own, then basically five stepkids. And, uh. You know, I kind of tried to keep them away from it, but it got to the point now where I we did an investigation in the house, and I did a, a YouTube video and a podcast episode. We all just sat in a dark bedroom and kind of just did an investigation. So it's it's weird how kids react to this kind of stuff. Most of them don't take it too seriously, but they're open to it, and that's that's a beautiful yeah, thing. That's exactly how they are. Yep. Well, since you brought it up, we talked earlier about this. You got interviewed by the travel channel which goes central mm -hmm. essentially uh paranormal caught on camera can you tell us anything about that i know it hasn't aired yet so tell us what that was like well you you know talk about you know opening things up well i i'd been catching orbs on um my camera at my home for probably two to three weeks and because I was a big um, fan of that show, you know, at the end they say, oh, if you've caught anything, send us your, you know, your links or your videos and we may feature you. So I was sending them all these orbs thinking, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm so excited. I'm getting orbs. I was like a kid in a candy store. It was so new and fresh and amazing to me. Well, I was sending probably I think I sent probably 10 videos to them. Mm -hmm. No reply. You could tell that they had opened it. It was over Facebook Messenger. So you could tell that they had opened it and looked at it. But like they literally did not reply. And I thought, okay, am I going crazy? Do they not, back to the orb thing, do they not believe my orbs? Or are these not important enough? Well, it was during July. And so they were on a hiatus. They were in between season two and three. And then I caught something at night away from my house on my phone. Um, it was in the parking lot. I was, I was on Facebook Messenger um, or the Marketplace, and that's kind of where you you can buy and sell. It's kind of like a garage sale online where right. you you can post stuff. Well, I had m meant to meet this person. It was a lady. It was a woman, and I. It was back to school. I'm a school teacher, so the only time that I had was at night because I'd been working all day. And it was a woman, so I felt safe. So we were supposed to meet at this public parking lot at a school that we both knew where it was at in town. And I was sitting there. She was about five, ten minutes late. And I see this light at the top of the light pole start to move and act really weird. And because, kind of like what you said, you're more open to it. You start um, seeing things that you never saw before, like your world has changed. I started hitting record because it was acting super strange. Well, a ghost figure falls from the light and starts walking across the parking lot. And the video on my YouTube is ghost walks across the parking lot. 
And it looked different in person. I mean, it looked strange in person, but on camera, it was so um, defined and obvious of what it was. And I sent that to them. And about a week later, um, they replied and they said, check your email. We just sent you an email. We love your video. And so I opened it up, went through the whole email process of, you know, communicating with them. And, you know, obviously we, we signed a contract for the use of my video and it will air um, pretty soon, like this season, um, within the next month or two. That'll be some good exposure for your YouTube channel. That's a mm -hmm. wonderful thing. Yeah. Um, I, probably they don't get too excited over orbs. I would imagine they get those a dime a dozen. I mean, they probably get those sent those all day long. And it took something a little bit more creepy or substantial yes. to get their attention, which I have not seen that video. I've missed that one. I've been kind of diving through oh. your back, your backlog, and uh, I have That's I have, a good I haven't one. seen it will that freak one. Freak you out. I will definitely, as soon as we're done with this, I will check that one out. Um, okay. Now, when it, I did check, see one of the videos that I did did listen to, it was, a, I believe, a QA. and a Apparently, yes. welcome to the club. <laughs> you had a Twitter beef already. It only took you, what, yes. uh, two months? That's, that's, oh, that's not it. even that. Oh, I'd say that's impressive. For maybe two weeks, if oh, that. that. That's got to be a record. I mean, it, oh, what? Well, Tell me the know, story I'm behind that. And I'm a Gemini, so I have a, a pretty aggressive nature. And it, it, I did, I don't, do you want me to talk about it? Oh, absolutely. We can out everybody <laughs> here. Who cares? Okay. I'm, I won't name the person. Um, but if you follow me on Twitter, you can go, it's still there. I haven't deleted anything. Um, but there was a famous person who is on, he's a host on, on a lot of these ghost shows super well known but apparently not well known enough for me to know him he had retweeted um someone had apparently he gets a lot of he's a medium a psychic medium uh that helps with a lot of investigations on these ghost shows well he someone had tweeted to him a picture of an orb um that you're talking about kind of like what this person did to you on facebook and I guess he gets those all the time and he retweeted it saying, I'm basically sick of these. Quit sending them to me. Your orb is not any special. It's just as special as everyone else's. And the person didn't reply and kind of shut them down and they got quiet. And it, I don't know, it really lit a fire in me. And I think about what would I have done the same thing if I'd have known he was famous or he was on TV, I probably would have still done the same thing. But to me, because they shut them down and kind of embarrassed them because it, he retweeted the, it out with a comment like, I'm too good for this type thing. Quit sending me this, this silly orb stuff. Um, it, I took it personal just because I had just had these experiences and this is how I got into this world and I get excited every time I see it. And this, it, this was like my baby steps. It's like a child walking for the first time. Right. And you, you may have been doing this for 30 years and you may be running, you may be galloping along. But to me, my first steps are important. Like my, my first steps in the paranormal world are important. And I'm a strong person. Um, I'm a strong woman and to me, I can handle that. And this person didn't look like they could because they they didn't respond. They got quiet. And I felt like I needed to respond and protect the underdog or protect that person who just got embarrassed, um, mm -hmm. who was really just trying to reach out to someone who has experience and who knew what he was talking about. He wanted advice. And um, he embarrassed him. And I got pissed off. I really did. And so I called him an asswipe, I think, <laughs> and said, you know, you have no right to compare your experiences with someone else's. Theirs is just as good as yours. I don't care if you've been doing this 20 years, 30 years. Don't treat people like that. You know, if I get too big in this field, like I said, I've only been doing this a couple of months, but if I feel like I've been doing this 20 years and I start treating people that way, then I need to get out because right. 
there's going to be newbies that come along who, who are going to message me who want, Hey, look at this video. And if I feel like I'm too good for that, that I, I can't help them. I can't give them advice. Then, then my reign is over. I need to stop. Right. Yeah. I mean, the key word there was medium. I -hmm. don't trust any of those. I'll be nice. Celebrity mediums. And that's what he was. You know, and I have a good idea. I ha- Yeah, I definitely have a good idea who it was. But after this is over, we stop recording. I'll have you tell me the name, see if it's who I think it is. Because I did, okay. I kind of, I when I saw that video and I kind of watched that video, I said, okay. And, you know, that's how we connected. You, We follow each other on Twitter. I said, okay, let me kind of dive in here and see if I can find it and see who it yeah, is. Yeah, this girl is pretty spicy. I mean, man, for her to post a fiery video like this. And uh, <laughs> and uh, so I I kind of started doing it, alone, checking your uh, feed and everything. And I was like, uh, and then something came up. I had to go do something because so I forgot it, forgot to find out. So I didn't find out who it was. But I'll ask you who it was, and then I'll see it. You know, see, give my okay. opinion. I might even do a follow up video after this on that guy. Absolutely. Oh, well, God. they ended up blocking me. And um, oh, we, we exchanged, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm so sad. We ended up exchanging for a couple of minutes before he blocked me, but you had some of his followers, some of his cronies uh, protecting him, but then you also had some of his followers um, that actually came to my defense and agreed with me and said, we've been wanting to say this forever. He has this thing about orbs, um, but we're too scared because he's so big and it took you to start this conversation with him and he doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't want anyone telling him he may be wrong or questioning his beliefs. And uh, I just, I, I did. And everyone was said, you, you, you don't need to question him because it will ruin your brand. And I said, I don't even have a brand. I'm new. I, I mean, and, and I, it's, this isn't about a brand. This is about the paranormal and this is about people. Right. And, if you treat people bad, then this is what's going to happen. And so I wasn't worried about a brand. I don't even have one yet. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm not worried about being canceled. You can't cancel. I'm yeah. already canceled, basically. Um, but you yeah. know that is the problem with these big time paranormal celebrities. From what I, from what I noticed, they they've lost that innocence to the point where. And they want to say they're so open-minded, but that's a two-way street. If you're open-minded, you have to be open-minded the other way, too. If somebody came to me or some there was some proof that all this paranormal, there's a rational explanation for it, all these supernatural things, I'd be okay with it. If somebody came with definitive proof that orbs, since we're talking orbs, are not mm-hmm. spirits, they are dust, they are this, and then there is some kind of other photography thing that proves it, I'm, I'm okay with it. But if somebody came to me and said, hey, there's no, there's no afterlife, there is no spirit world, it's been scientifically proven at this point to my justification, I look at the numbers, I'm okay, I'm good. I, I can live with that. I'm not that married to any of this, but I do believe that there is something to the afterlife, there is a spirit world, and, you know, I believe the spirit world is all around us at all times. It's just a matter of we're not tuned into it. Uh, it's almost like, and I've 100%. used, I use, I heard this, I think I interviewed some Karen Woodhouse, I think it was, who gave me this analogy. It's like a radio and the spirit world is all around us. We're occupying the same space. It's just, we're not tuned into it. Our dial isn't tuned into that frequency. Every now and then it does get tuned in and we catch these things because that is why you might have an ex, we might be in the same room investigating together. You might have an experience and I might not because you might be tuned into it and I'm just not tuned into it, fine tuned into it. And and do they call that your third eye? Is that what they call the intune? I, you know, that is, I believe that is part of it. You know, your, what is that? The pineal gland, I believe, is what the, the third eye mm-hmm. refers to. How as we old, mm-hmm. it kind of gets it Gets hardened. crusty, huh? Yeah, it, it hardens. <laughs> you know, and there's some conspiracy theorists that say, you know, they're doing that on purpose, but we won't get into conspiracies on this one. Uh, but if you're not open to that, you know, you're not going to see these things. And if, you know, just like if you hadn't had that one moment with your video and said, that's kind of weird. 
you wouldn't be here today. You wouldn't be, you know, having success on YouTube. So, I mean, it only takes one little thing. And it's sad that people like this fake TV medium, I'll say it, probably because that's what he is. If he's on TV, he's probably, you know, he's probably got an earpiece. You know, people telling him what's going on. To ruin somebody else's opinion that mm -hmm. this now the and 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 what i guess what i saw was you know he could be in this person that sent him this picture could be in the same seat that i'm in now he could be experiencing a lot of things but because he was shut down and embarrassed he literally just shriveled him he's done he's closed right. it he, he said, you know, I must be crazy. This guy is famous. He knows what he's talking about. I must be nuts. Uh, and he will never open that back up again. And, you know, me, I'm, I'm not going to sit by and let that happen um, if I can help it. And if I see it, obviously, I'm sure it goes, goes on everywhere. But if I have a voice, uh, I'm going to speak up for myself and I'm going to speak up for the ones that I see. And I'll be damned if you act like you're better than me because you've seen a full apparition and all I've got are orbs. And then here I come with a full apparition and are and on paranormal call on camera. So, you know, you can kind of kiss my ass. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's, and there's a better way if he doesn't. And I think it's a kind of a microcosm of society today. We, if people don't agree with us or we don't agree with somebody, you know, we just shut them down in today's society mm -hmm. he didn't have to shut that person down and be be a dick to him or whatever no and and he has such a platform he has so many followers that he could have used that um to educate to inform exactly. and not to embarrass and that's right. what happened and um you know i guess the mom came out in me the teacher came out in me you know you have those kids in class that everyone picks on or they make fun of um, and I just, I got really protective and angry for him, but then also because that could have been me. And if I had been weaker or lesser or, um, not a Gemini who's afraid to, you know, <laughs> argue with you, right. um, I, I, it would have, it would have ended my experience as well. I would have shut down. I would have been done and I would not be here. So, right. yeah, I mean, he could have handled it much different and he doesn't even have to agree. He could have got the same point across. Just like how I, you know, we talked about that lady who sent me the picture. You know, I don't necessarily think all of those orbs that she sent in that video she sent me were spirits. One of them, like I said, was kind of interesting the way it, way it did glow and the way it moved. But I, I'm not going to sit there and say oh, you're crazy. Those are just bugs. Dust. Well, and you could also look at it and just you know absorb it and listen to it and watch it and send her feedback personally. You know. You secretly, you know, just yeah. whatever, but it's just between you and her. You didn't have to blast that in front of right. the whole public either. Right, no. right. And, you know, it's, I've seen, I've been on investigations where I've looked at DVR, you know, foot, I've been watching DVR footage, and it looked like snow. There was so much, so many orbs. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I had, now some of those could have been spirits, but if I go, I go into that room, and I said this in my little, uh, video that i did on uh all the social media but about orbs is like these paranormal investigation hot spots there's not a maid there they are dusty if you have allergies you don't want to go to these damn places because they're dusty mm -hmm. they don't, they, and that's why zach bacon wears that face yes. mask all the time <laughs> yeah yes yes good old zach don't even get me started with zach sometimes uh -oh. i want to Oh, well, no, it's just, I, oh, I love Zach. Not really, but I want to, one of these days, I want to do a podcast on a, on a, on a Friday night, live one. And every time he says demon, I'm going to do a shot and see how drunk I can get by the end of the, in the hour. <laughs> but, you know, that, you know, but that video that I was watching that DVR footage, it looked like snow. There were so many orbs. Now, 99.9% .9 of that was probably just the dust floating around from the ventilation. Mm -hmm. But, you know. Some of it could have been, it was an extremely active place and I caught amazing activity there, had some extremely profound personal experiences and caught some stuff on video where, you know, a door, cabinet door opening up on video. And mm -hmm. so odds are there could have been something paranormal in that, but 90% of that was dust. 
But I'm not going to sit there and say, eh, it's all dust. I leave, you know, I don't want to, maybe I'm just weak. I just don't, I want to leave the door open for everything, you know, just in case. And yeah. that's. And the, the, the videos that I post of my orbs are super big, super defined. There's nothing. In fact, some of the videos you could see the bugs flying next to it. It is very, very different. And I make sure that I post things that are very visible so that you have no doubt that that's what it is. And it's never five or six. It's always one big one that's literally walking across the camera. Um, and you can almost see little legs at the bottom of them. Uh, and then they usually absorb into the side of the wall. So it's like walking into the wall. So, you know, those are really hard to debunk. Um, obviously, I put them up for people to look at and, you know, come to their own conclusion. But obviously, Paranormal Caught on Camera um, decided that some of my videos were okay. So, so I that's, guess that's they're the important. experts, huh? They're the experts. <laughs> They are there. Like I caught a somebody caught a. I was doing a an investigation in like a train, an old abandoned train tunnel that's known for activity here in Ohio, and I was just walk. I was inside the tunnel, and there, somebody was filming me, and they sent me the video. I don't. I might still be on my phone, but something was circling me. Some kind of orb was circling me. Now, first, first and foremost, I would if somebody said that's just a bug. Okay, it very well could have been a bug. But when I sit back and think, I was like, okay, I remember when this video was taken. I know exactly what, and it was around my head. And anybody's had bugs, everybody's had bugs fly around their head. Mm -hmm. You can hear them flapping, your wings flapping, the hum, the hiss. I did not hear anything. I did, you did not see me, you know, swat anything away. So, and I don't remember anything being there. So what was it? Now, it still could have been a bug, but. What was it is the question. And the way I look at it is that piece of evidence on its own is one thing and is, I won't say weak, but not as strong. But when you have other activity going along with that, that adds credibility to that orb or that, you know, that Mm -hmm. whatever it is people think it is. When you have multiple things going on, it lends credibility to that just like you know we talked earlier you know you're going to start doing some investigations and you're getting some equipment uh Mm -hmm. and yeah and and that's something that was really hard for me because you know on my youtube channel i had i had been i have been getting so many things my house cameras were so i caught things in my living room and my bedroom and the backyard, the front yard that I posted on my YouTube that I'm going to post a video every week of my home hauntings or my home videos. Well, I haven't had anything. This is the first week. Last week was the first week I hadn't caught anything. So I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do on Friday? What (laughs) video am I going to post? I don't have anything. We need more content here. I know. So one, you know, People could fake it just to have something on Friday. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to fake it. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole and start this chain of events of faking things. So I said, you know what? I'm going to create a true crime, myths, legends, things that I, something else that I could talk about or supplement with Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of blowing up as well. I'd rather do that than fake paranormal because that's not fair. And uh, I would... I wouldn't want someone to do that to me for me to watch a video that was fake. And I'm not going to produce anything like that. So instead of going out there with a flashlight or something and trying to create this light orb thing, I created a different playlist Uh, because I think that's more valid and I won't put anything on my site that's fake or doctored or altered or created in any way. Right. You know, another, and the, the way I take that approach, I take that approach as well. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with, uh, like, on your Friday, you didn't have nothing to do, to do a video and just talk. Hey, I didn't get nothing. this. I didn't get mm-hmm. anything this week. This is how the paranormal works, you know, and just do. Yeah, you know, and I, did a, I think I did a question and answer that week, and um, there was a lot of questions on Twitter that they, people had asked me. Uh, so I just did a Q&A, a get ready with me, and um, kind of get to know me type thing, and that was just as successful right. and I yeah. didn't have to fake anything. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I've always, you know, there's, that's one reason when it comes to the paranormal on YouTube, I am very sketchy of 
most of it just for the mere fact there's fake there's a lot of fakes going on and there's some people that not even faking stuff there it's outright you know it's they're not even hiding hiding the fact that it's fake stuff but then there have been some well, big... for you to put me on your podcast that tells me that, oh, that at least I, you have some faith in me i must right, be absolutely. doing something right <laughs> absolutely i you know i wasn't going to bring you on and then out you real quick no um but no yeah you know there have been some big youtubers paranormal youtubers that have been caught faking stuff and that's hey whatever you got to do to get views but i don't want views that bad and i think i even did a episode in this back in the beginning about i'd rather not get views than fake evidence you well know? i don't have time to fake evidence i'm i'm a single mom with two kids i have a full-time job i'm a teacher so you know they say 40 hours but we really work 60 70 hours a week right and i don't i literally don't know how to fake anything nor do i have time i, I all i do is i wake up and i check my cameras the little list of videos and see if there's anything on there and then I just save them to my phone if I catch anything. Um, that's literally what I do. Um, right. and, and so for me, I don't, I don't have the time to research. How do you fake a ghost or what apps do you use? Um, you know, I'm just barely surviving with what I've got. So right. well, that's and honestly the best from everything I've learned. The honesty is always the best policy when it comes to creating content. You know, if somebody doesn't want to listen to you just because, you know, you don't have you don't have the orb this week. Then piss on them. Who mm -hmm. needs them? You know, I but I like how you you branch it out a little bit. You know, doing I did today. You posted the what the John Bonet with Ramsey video. Was that today or was that yesterday? Yes. That and, you know, it was supposed to be yesterday. Yeah, oh, that's right. You it did was so long. Yeah. It took so I, I you know I I'm such a perfectionist. I wanted that video to go out yesterday, and it was long. And YouTube takes forever, and I just kept editing and editing and, and trying to make it better and better and better. And I'm, like I said, I've been doing this for a month. Um, and my videos get better every time. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm learning all the new, the new things about them and how, how to make them visually presentable. And so, yeah, I just kept working on it and I didn't end up posting it till today, but yeah, the John Ramsey case is, uh, I did a true crime series, um, to kind of supplement my hauntings until I can get my equipment that I got sponsored for. And, um, that one was really hard, you know, as a mom, uh, you know, when, when, well, one as a teacher, I don't like, I'm very protective of kids. Um, so that case was really hard too. I have a blonde daughter, so she kind of reminds me of John Bonet. Um, so yeah, when little kids get hurt, those really are hard for me to mm, talk about yeah. cover. Um, yeah, yeah, it it was a tough one. Because you know, I had a, I was getting things ready before I you know I skyped you, and I said, well, let me. I started to check it out. I watched like the first five minutes of it. I was like, okay, I'm not, nothing personal. I can't watch it. I can't watch it. You know, because a lot of it's, people, especially people who don't have kids, don't understand that when you have kids, your whole mindset flips and changes, and it's hard mm -hmm. to watch watch stuff like that. You know, I'll be, you know, here in this house, mm -hmm. we we get there's a big joke. You know the movie Armageddon, if you have with Bruce Bruce Willis about and Ben Affleck, they blow up the the asteroids, it's going to hit Earth. You know, and there's a there is a scene where Bruce Willis is talking. You know, he has to stay behind and blow up the asteroid to save his daughter who is on Earth, and they are talking back and forth. I cry like a little girl. I'm, I'm, I'll admit it right mm -hmm. here on the podcast. And you know, my better half, she says, "Or look, she when Armageddon is on and we see it, she goes, we're going to watch this. You need to cry.'" You know, I'm like, damn it. And, <laughs> and it, it out. Let it out. You know, it wasn't like that. I wasn't like that until, you know, I'm 47 years old. You know, and when I was growing up, you, yeah. men it, do not cry. It'll be a minute before I do another one about a child being right. hurt. If I, yeah. if I do it again, that one was hard. Um, so, yeah, I would rather do live investigations. I can't wait for this equipment. And um, then, then to do true crimes about uh, murder and things like that. So... Um, I'd rather keep it on the positive side, but, you know, to supplement, I, there are some cases that still bug me and that was mm. one of them. So yeah. I decided to go ahead and dive into it. And the more I researched it, man, um, the more I, I got mad. I mean, I guess once again, just, it, it makes me mad that some of the, the facts that I found out about it, but 
Yeah, I'd rather do investigations for sure. Now, uh, when it comes to investigation, have you reached out to a paranormal team or are you going to fly solo on these investigations or how are you thinking about going and going forward with actually going I out? I have and not reached out to a team. To be honest with you, there is no one in my area that I have found. Really? Uh, I'm in, no, I, you know, I'm in the middle of the Bible Belt. Uh, I'm in Arkansas, Fort Smith. Um they're the closest one is like in Oklahoma City that I have connected with. I mean, once this airs and, you know, there may be some that I don't know about, but um, I I don't know of any in this area. So I may have to start one. Um, that, I don't know who's with me, but that, I'm all for that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that is probably the best way to do it. I mean, if and because I come up from it, there's two ways to do it. And I think even if you are a part of a team or you do find a team you could investigate with, you still have to have some alone time in uh, these locations. Because you have to, when you go on an investigation, you have to be one, it's, I'm getting a little woo-woo here, but you have to connect with the energy of the home. Yes. Just like how we talked about tuning in to the spirit world or whatever it is. And sometimes with groups, it's hard to do that. You got so much outside interference. And so when I'm going on an investigation, I like to do a solo investigation. I say, hey, you guys mm -hmm. stay here, or I'm going to go to this part of the room or this part of the location and just be by myself. Sit in the dark and be by myself and kind of listen, feel, and get what I get. And if I don't get anything, I don't get anything. But, you know, so it, you have That's to do okay. both. Yeah, oh, yeah. I've, I've, we went, the last investigation we went to, and I've kind of talked a little bit on the past episodes, but, you know, there's a really haunted schoolhouse. We didn't get much activity that, that, that we knew of when we were there. It wasn't heavy. We didn't uh, feel like it was, there felt like there might be something there, but it just wasn't interacting with us. But we come back, you know, we were out in Iowa, but we came back and Apparently, I I haven't even reviewed all my you know recorders and stuff yet. But um, they call. I got a phone call saying, "Hey, these recorders are lit up with disembodied voices and weird noises, and you know, so you never know what is mm -hmm. what it's like. And you might, because I was fully uh, prepared to come back the next day, shoot a start doing a podcast episode about it, and trash the place." And I didn't because mm -hmm. you, I hadn't, I was just basing that on my personal experiences, what I felt there, but I could have been wrong. And so you have to kind of step back when you investigate and look at the whole picture. You just can't focus in on one thing. So definitely try to find a team, but also try to do some yourself, you know, that way you can be. Okay. You, you know, know, the one thing that I'm worried about is having an attachment or bringing something home to my kids so, um, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I've been reaching out, make sure I cleanse afterwards, you know, spiritually cleanse mm -hmm. afterwards to make sure that I get rid of any of that right. energy, negative energy. Uh, so I've been researching that, um, definitely don't want to bring something home to my kids who are not in this world. Obviously right. they're not, they're not experiencing this stuff. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so that's important for me as well. And that, and that's when I first started, that was kind of my, I was like, I had the same thoughts. I was like, I don't want to get an attachment and do things. But, you know, as I've been doing this, and this is my, what this is how I handle it, and I don't recommend this for everybody, I have a firm belief that it depends on you. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like smudging and things such as that, is it really the smudging that's working, driving these bad or evil or darker spirits out? Or is it your faith in that act that is causing them to go go away or whatever? Yeah. You know, I firmly... It could be both. It could be right, both. Exactly. I firmly believe it's... A, obviously, you're a strong person, you know, and you have a strong mental strength. And I hate to use the word weak. Weaker people from what I've seen mentally tend to get more attachment. If you are strong and you are, you know, say you will not attach to me. If you go into a place that is, you will not attach to me, you will not come home with me and you project strength. I look at darker or evil spirits more like bullies and you being a teacher know all about this. 
in our day, most times there's only one way to deal with a bully. You have to stick up for yourself in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And I think evil spirits is the same way. Now, this isn't for everybody. And I could be completely and totally wrong, so I wouldn't tell anybody what to do. You have to do whatever you feel is right. If somebody asks me, hey, I have this going on, I say, you got to do what you feel is right. But whatever you do, have conviction in when you do it. Because trust me, I've broken every paranormal rule in the book to see how far I could push it. And I've been I've been all right that I know. Of course, I guess I could have an attachment. But, you know, so I don't know. I'm, and I, I try to push the boundaries just a little bit just to kind of see where, you know, where the line is and what needs to be done. And from what I noticed, you, it's mental strength. You have to be mentally strong and have whatever you choose to do, whether it be, you know, recite a Bible verse or have a crucifix or do the smudging. You have to have conviction and a faith in that. Your faith is really what gives that thing or that activity the power, you know, from what I've seen, but who knows? Yeah, what what I've researched is they do attach to fear. So it's kind of like riding a horse. A horse can sense your fear and mm -hmm. will completely dominate the rider if they feel like the rider is inexperienced and has a lot of fear. They just can absorb that energy. I, you know, I've ridden several horses before, so that was something that we were taught is don't let them know you're scared. You take control. You let them know that you're in charge. Right. And that's kind of how I feel about this. Um, they can sense your fear. They will attach to it. They will use it uh, to their advantage. And as long as I go in there confident and uh, you, you know, without fear, it will be fine. And, and that is 100%, I believe. And from my experience, you are 100, you hit the nail right on the head. It's about mm -hmm. fear. They feed on the fear. It's like the, you use the horse analogy or a dog or, you know, how many times have mm -hmm. somebody, you know, if you got a barking dog or an aggressive dog, the more scared you are, the more aggressive they're going to be. You have to stay in your ground. You got to be the alpha. You yeah. got to be the alpha. But, now, I do want to, I do want to, you know, interject there too, because I, I have seen there, there are some times when Zach upsets me or some of these ghost shows upset me because they're antagonizing the ghosts. They're uh, yelling at them. They're trying to make them mad. So they do catch something on camera. And I don't agree with that. I, I think you should respect the dead as much as you should the living. And um, just because you're needing something on camera for ratings or you need something to put on a show, you throwing things, yelling at them, antagonizing them so they will respond to you. I don't like that either. So I'm going to be whenever I do my first investigation, I'm going to make sure that I ask permission. Can I use your energy or can you use my energy or can I talk to you or say please and thank you? Right. I think manners goes a long way. And I, and I want to be one of those that respects that. Right. And that's, you know, there's a lot of those paranormal reality shows. They do, you know, it's called, you know, they call it provoking or the paranormal mm -hmm. will call it provoking. But there is a difference between provoking and defending. I have no issue with getting a little rambunctious with the spirit, the spirit world. If you feel you are being attacked or there is something going on, yes. you sense some negative energy or somebody has been pushed or scratched or slapped. Hey, I'm all for, you know, you have to project that, project that strength. And if you have to get a little bit more aggressive, get a little bit more louder, you have to show that you are the alpha, even in the spirit world. This is our realm. You're not going to come to my house and, or my realm and hurt anybody here. But if you're just trying, like you said, just trying to stir up activity, and, you know, that's just, it's cheap. It's, it's cheap. Like poking the bear with a right. stick. Right. Dance I mean, for me, dance. Right. You and, know, I don't, I don't want that. <laughs> and odds are they're not going to respond. Because mm -hmm. I, I believe, you know, they tune into, all, we have to tune into their energy. They have to tune into our energy too. Because if I've been to places that, even that Ghost Adventures has been to, and I wasn't probably in the best frame of mind. I, you know, I, I talk a lot about, you know, you have to be mentally prepared to go an inve investigation. If you go, you know, troubled or something on your mind, you're not in your best mood, you're not going to do your best work. Just like being a teacher, if you got something on your mind, you're not going to teach the kids mm -hmm. the best of your ability. Same with, with parents. Oh, they read it. They yeah. can tell. 
They're like, Miss, have you had a bad day? Yeah. And yes. how could it, you tell? <laughs> and if uh, the the spirit world probably can do that too. And that's why I've been to some investigations that or some really haunted place supposedly that have are known for activity and I haven't gotten anything. So was it the place, was it me, or was it just a bad night? You don't know, but who knows? So I don't know. I mean, provoking is, but they got, and that's why I always say the paranormal rally shows, you have to take them with a grain of salt. They're in the entertainment business, yeah. and they, they got to keep, get people to watch to sell advertising. So you you can't, you know, who knows? It's I don't. It's gotten to the point where I don't even who watch knows? them. Who knows? I don't even watch them anymore. I, you know, I watch, I take that back. I'll watch, you know, Jack Osborne's got the show just because, of matter of fact, I like Jack Osborne. I remember the old Osborne's reality show. Oh, the new one with his yeah. parents now? Oh, that's hilarious. And I don't even watch it for yeah. the paranormal. I just watch it for Ozzy and Sharon's interactions. I mean, that's hilarious. But, you know, <laughs> you know, but Ghost Adventures and honestly, it all went downhill with Ghost Adventures. I mean, Ghost Hunters, the original Ghost Hunters, kind of had the right model of debunking, trying to prove the paranormal, to where Ghost Adventures kind of sensationalized it a little bit and made it more of an entertainment factor. But it is what it is. Good, God bless Zach. I love him. <laughs> yeah, I think they're making it more mainstream and forefront and kind of putting it um, out there as kind of cool and neat right. and not so scary is and that's, what I think is happening. And that's something you can't take away from them. I mean, they have brought it to the forefront and made it much easier to talk about and to start a YouTube channel mm -hmm. and get viewerships or start the, a podcast and get uh, listeners. So you have to thank them for that. But on the other hand, he's still a douchebag, but that's beside the point. All right. <laughs> All righty. Uh, I think we're going to wrap it up. We've actually went almost an hour, a little over an hour. Uh, do you have any social media uh, that you want to put out there? People can contact you. Sure. Um, my Twitter is Kelly's Unexplained. I think the the handle is at Kelly Nickel 7. Um, so I think the headline is Kelly's Unexplained, but the handle is at Kelly Nickel 7. Um I, my Instagram is the same. It's actually, no, it's not. I take that back. It's Nikki Nick, N I C I underscore N I K K. But I will send that to you and you can put I, that up there. Yeah, you send that to me. At all you can find all this in the uh, description and the show notes of the page. And also, there will be a link to her YouTube page. So be sure to go subscribe to that. I have. And you. Please. I, you, if you watch your videos, comment, you will see me in the comment sections. So definitely hit that subscribe button for her. And we've also, uh, we're not going out, we're going to go out on a limb here. She talked about maybe she might start a podcast. So we're not going to hold her to it. But. I am. I'm going to start one as soon as I, you know, I've, I've, you know, done the YouTube thing. And I think this podcast is my next step. I'm all about upgrading. So, so we're going to add that to the list. So be on the lookout for that. So if you have any questions for her, be sure to reach out to her and check out those, sh those social medias and be sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel. So I thank you so much, Kelly, for coming on the uh, podcast. And I think it was enlightening. Absolutely. And we'll, thank we you will, for having me. We will definitely have to have you on again once you get some more paranormal activity and the dry spell is over for your house oh i'm gonna go i'm gonna go find them now <laughs> there you go <laughs> all right thank you for listening to the podcast right, and we'll see you. we'll see you next week all righty that was my conversation with kelly i hope you enjoyed it i really enjoyed talking to her I, like i said in the beginning i uh love her enthusiasm for it and i hope it's only going to I hope it only grows. I'm sure it's only going to grow with the more experience she gets and more activity she experiences, especially when she starts going out and doing her own investigations by herself or with a team, however, whatever path she chooses. Um, let me know what you think. Be sure to subscribe to all her, uh, to her channel. Be sure to follow her on the uh, associated social media links that will be in the description and give her some love and be sure to be interactive in the comment section. Let her know what you think about what she puts out there.
And I think that's going to do it. Don't forget, follow me on Facebook. My Facebook page for the podcast is, you can find it at Ghost of the Night. Uh, Twitter, great way to follow me, at night underscore ghost. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, what is that? Uh, ghost under, or yeah, ghost underscore night underscore podcast. I'm starting to put a lot more um, videos and content out on those social media platforms. I'm um, just not the podcast episodes like I've been doing in the past. I'm kind of trying to do some new things, even some shorter things, just to kind of interact with you guys a little bit more. And don't forget Sundays. Generally, we do a live show that airs on or it gets released on Thursdays of the next week. So I do that on my Facebook page. So be sure to follow me on Facebook, like that, and subscribe to that. Or no, you don't subscribe, just like it and follow me. And join me for those live shows. So if you do that, you'll get a preview of what Thursday's episode, the, follow, the next Thursday's episode is going to be about. It's a great way to stay informed and interact during the podcast and if you say something or have a comment or idea and i see it i can't check them all the comments but if uh, i see it maybe we'll talk about it right there on the spot and you will be a part of the show so that's going to do it for now thank you for checking out this podcast episode if you're watching on youtube thank you and be sure to subscribe to the youtube channel appreciate that as well we'll see you next week take care everybody